want you to know something. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm having so much fun watching you guys, and I, I, I know it was 20, 25 years ago. <laughs> we're talking about stuff, but it's so funny. So I, I kind of want to clean out my closet of Stuttering John because I was always friends with Stuttering John. I never thought, I never thought anything other than he's Stuttering John. And my best friend, Autumn, she did John's website, never got paid. And when John came out with his book and, and all that stuff, she would get mad because he would badmouth me all the time. And I just like, this is 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I don't care. So in you guys finding all this stuff out, I got to see all these interviews and stuff like that. Throughout all these interviews, I just see so many things he said about me, which were just wrong. And he thinks that I'm so stupid that I don't get what he's doing. Like when my book came out, I wrote, um, I, I, I wrote in there everything that we are talking about now. And I, I, I put, is this going to be boring? Uh, book simply amazing. Um, I'll read this in, in, a, in another segment. I'll read this, but it just says that basically I worked for a guy that was famous. <laughs> uh, the guy I worked for was someone special. I was just lucky to be around him. As far as personalities who came on the show, I think it's easy to lose track and believe that you are a celebrity when the real truth is that you work for one. That is everything uh, what Stuttering John is. The only time he is entertaining at all is when Who Are These Podcasts plays clips of his show to point out how incredibly stupid he is, how incredibly untalented and unfunny, how hypocritical he is, nasty, belligerent, jealous, and projects what he knows he is to other people. He tries to do that projection thing. Uh, he's terrible. And he loves to say uh, what an amazing personality he is although he's got to bring up shit from 30 years ago sometimes even even longer ago i remember a show where he was telling uh, his fans how his elementary school drama teacher praised him for a party did in an elementary school play could you imagine could you fucking imagine having to delve back into your elementary school drama production and go my teacher told, told me i was like shakespeare because anything he's doing now is just abominable. The worst part is it's just boring. What I've seen over the years, the guy is just a liar. He can't be honest with anyone. He lies about his career. He lies about money. He lies about friends and, and, and business and coworkers in the, in the entertainment business. How, how do you know if he's ever telling the truth so he, he spouts this nonsense. He just lies. Throughout this cleaning out my closet of stuttering John, I'm going to be telling you a bunch of stories. First one, I know he's going to get mad at me. I don't mean any of that. I thought John was my friend, liked him a lot. You hang out with him one-on-one. -on -one. He's a different guy than you see, but he really is entitled. He is not very aware of one's self. The only people that I have a problem with is people think that they're better than someone else. Here's one that he's gonna hate. At the Stern Show, 20 something years ago, we used to use this thing called Lotus Notes. It's how people used to communicate. He used to hate this because there was different levels. First was called group. That was all the interns, um, that was um, e-guys, that was everyone in the studio. And then after you got through group, you went to this thing called guys. Now, guys were the writers of the show. So John says he's a writer. He wasn't in that group called Guys. And uh, all those people had colors. The writing had a color, like Howard was red. Fred was green. Laura, who was Howard's assistant, was another color. Jackie was dark blue. I was light blue. And it was about five or six people. John hated that because he wasn't involved in it because he didn't do anything. He didn't write any bits. He didn't. Uh, write any questions for even him to go out. He did nothing. 
the one thing he did was he had the screen that said line 17, Joe, you know, whatever. He would every once in a while write a joke because Howard could see what he was writing. I remember many times Howard saying, why is John writing stuff to me? I want him to write uh, what line the caller is on. Stop writing me notes. But every once in a while, Howard would read one, and then he go, and Howard, um, John would put his hands up. I wrote that. I wrote that just to announce to everybody in the room. I wrote that. <laughs> um, uh, John was not a writer. All right, he didn't write for the show. You know, me and Gary actually had work to do. I was Gary's assistant. During the commercials, Gary did his thing, and when he was done, and then I said, oh, yeah, Howard, I got these cards. I got, you know, I got a stand-up from, uh, from uh, Joe Rogan, or it was just something like that, you know? And I would play it for him during the commercial with the time we had left. And then if I was done, sometimes John would be there, and, and Gary would say, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then John would say, well, there's, a, there's a guy on line four. You might like the guy on line four. Hey. I got a lot more where this came from. I hope some of it was entertaining. And I'll, I'll give you guys some material because you guys have entertained me. Guys, keep doing what you're doing because you're making me laugh hilariously. So I'll be back, guys. <laughs>